class, I have a question for you. If you look at this molecule here versus a conjugated diene, which one do you think is more stable? Well, that's what we're going to talk about next is the experimental design to figure out how, which one of these molecules is more stable. Now, the answer to that question of how to do it is simply do a hydrogenation reaction. So I'm going to come here. So what we're doing to figure out which one is more stable is we're going to take, let's say, the diene. And we're going to treat it with two moles of hydrogen gas. And we're going to do a hydrogenation reaction, which we are going to convert the diene into a alkane. And when you do that reaction, you're going to give off some heat. We're going to do that reaction, then compare. We'll do a hydrogenation as well with the alkene. And we're going to keep it consistent. we got to have two moles of hydrogen there, so we need two moles of hydrogen there. And we're going, since we're using two moles of hydrogen, we're going to need two moles of the alkene. And we're just keeping everything consistent. Two pi bonds, a total of two pi bonds. And then that's going to give us the same exact product. It's going to give us the alkane. And it's going to also give us heat. Okay. Now, how is this going to tell us or answer the question, which one is more stable? Well, it comes back to energetics. So if we draw ourselves a little graph here, and on the y-axis we have enthalpy, which is simply the heat that's going to be released when you do this hydrogenation reaction. And what we can see is between the two possibilities, the diene and the alkene, we both come to the same product. Okay? So I'm going to represent the product with this line right here. So there's our product. Now, the question is, we're going to have our starting materials here. Okay? Now, we don't know at this moment in time which one of these is the alkene and which one of those is the diene. But before we get there, whatever this molecule is, diene or alkene, it is going to release that much heat or that much energy when it goes from the starting material to product. And then the same thing for this starting material. We don't know yet what it is, <clears throat> if it's the alkene or the diene, but when it does undergo the hydrogenation reaction, it's going to release that much heat. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is the so what's going to how we're going to interpret this is the molecule that gives off the most heat. So this molecule right here is going to give off the most heat because there's a larger energy gap. So the molecule that gives off the most heat so most heat means it is the least stable. Do you see how that, in this diagram here, that's higher in energy than that? So isn't that a cool experimental design right there? You're all going to get the same product, doesn't matter what starting material you have, diene or alkene. And so you can track how much heat's given off, and that can tell you which molecule is higher in energy. So when we come back to our slides here, what do we see? All right. There's our alkane. 
look at this. Our dyeing gives off the least amount of heat. And our alkene gives the most heat. So from that experiment, we have figured out that the conjugated dyeing is the most stable when you compare these two. Isn't that cool? Now, how, how much more stable is it? Right there. It's 15 kilojoules per mole of stabilization just by adding that second alkene there which when you add that second alkene, you generate a conjugated system. And like I said in the previous videos, when electrons are delocalized and can move around, that's what's happening in a conjugated pi system. Electrons have more freedom of movement. So it's lower in energy. And so this hydrogenation experiment demonstrates that. Here's some um, problem that you can ask yourself, see what you come up with, and we can discuss this in class. Okay, whenever we look at a single bond, so if we have a methyl group here, okay, single bonds have free rotation. We've learned that from Orgo 1. So they constantly can spin, no restriction, right? But if I place a double bond, rotation is now locked. It cannot rotate around that double double bond. Okay, that's impossible. But when you look at a dying, like this guy, there is still free rotation about that single bond right there. So you can have free rotation there. And so the dying can have two stable conformations now they're not they don't have the same stability but of all the possible conformers these two are the best okay and what we have is what's called a s cis and an s trans now we've learned in uh orgo one when we look at a alkene and if we look at that versus this, we know this molecule right here is trans because the two largest groups on either side of that alkene are on opposite sides. So that's trans. Whereas this one right here is cis because the two largest groups are on the same side. Kind of the same idea now with dyings other than this s right here stands for single and what it's representing is the single bond right there and right there with respect to the single bond do you see how that the alkenes are on the same side so that hence that will be s cis and then over here, we see the double bonds here are on opposite sides of that single bond. So that is going to be S trans. Now, these two conformers, or also we call them rotomers, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if it's in the S cis or in the S trans, you're still going to have conjugation. Now, between those two conformers, we see there's going to be some equilibrium here because they can shift between this S cis and the S trans. And the energy associated with going from this S cis to the S trans okay, <clears throat> is a, it's going to go through this transition state of 15 kilojoules per mole. So that's enough energy or at room temperature 
this dying is going to go is at equilibrium between the two conformers. At room temperature, that's enough energy to overcome that barrier. Okay. But between the two, you can see on this graph here, it's showing that the S cis is higher in energy than the S trans. And the explanation for that is very simple. It has to do with steric hindrance. So when you look at the S cis here, you're going to have some hydrogens coming off, right? Like so. So you can see right here, there's some steric clash. So because there's some steric hindrance there, it's going to be higher in energy. And in the S trans, there's no steric hindrance. Okay. Now I said that there's many conformers because that's what we're showing on this X axis, right? But the most important ones are the S cis with a dihedral angle of zero versus 180. Now there's this one right here at 90, which corresponds to the highest energy on this graph. Now that highest energy point is demonstrated here. When the diene has a dihedral angle right here of 90 degrees. And the reason why that guy at that point in time, or at that point in its confirmation, is the highest in energy is because look at what has happened to conjugation. There's no more conjugation because of the bond angle right here. So what's happening is when it's rotating, when you have that bond angle there, conjugation has been destroyed. So that's why it's the highest in energy.